Uh, mothers are, are, are definitely sent from God. They're, they're a gift from God. And I just want to acknowledge you mothers on today. Praise God. You, you are fearfully and you are wonderfully made and marvelous are his works and your soul knoweth right well. And I'm going to deal with a, um, a topic today for you mothers today. You know, normally on, 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 on Mother's Day, we speak a word of edification. Um, but today I'm going to speak a word of, of deliverance for mothers on today. And a uh, very tough topic. I've been hearing this, this phrase of, of emotional, emotional uh, damage and things that have been done. Amen. And, and, and emotional healing needs to come forth even to our mothers on today. Amen. A lot of mothers are carrying stillborn, still, stillborn pain. Amen. And you're carrying it as if you're still carrying a baby, but it's pain that you're carrying. And you got to release that thing today. And we, we're going to believe God for deliverance on today. Amen. Amen. So Luke chapter four, verse 17 says this. And there was delivered unto him a book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering to the sight, to the blind, to set liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day of scripture is fulfilled in your ear. Today, we're gonna to talk about emotional healing for broken mothers. Amen, emotional healing for broken mothers. You may be seated in the presence of God. Amen. Uh, God just gave me this this morning. So y'all pray for me and pray. I just got a bunch of scriptures, but I, I, I have some things on my heart that I think God want to share. First of all, emotions is one of the greatest powers there is on this universe, in this universe. Praise God. We have emotions. Somebody said we have emotions. We have emotions. That's a part, you know, that we have to deal with so your will, your mind, and your emotion. These things have to be dealt with. The Bible tells us we need to love the Lord with all our heart our mind and our soul, which pertains our emotions too, have to be given over because if you're an emotional wreck or a train wreck, praise God, or, or you're moving in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the momentum of your emotions, sooner or later, you're going to derail at some point, you know, closet bondage. Anybody know anything about closet bondage? It's things we, we never want to allow anyone to see. And therefore we hide our, our hurts and, and healing can never take place. And, and mothers, you are our professionals. Women in general are professionals at hiding pain. Guess what, men, we are too. We're professionals at hiding our emotional pain because we think emotions are for women. A lot of times we think women deal with things in, in feelings and they do and men deal with things in facts, but sometimes there are men that are just as emotional train wreck as women are. So these emotions, you know, we hide these, we got this closet bondage, this stuff that we don't want anyone to ever know. So we hide it, so it's pain. Think about having something like cancer and never going to the doctor. It will eventually kill you, amen. amen. If you have an ailment, pain is an indicator, just like you have indicated lights on your car. If you don't check them, ask me how I know. I had two check engine lights on and, and two vehicles, praise God, and both times I blew an engine because I, I decided that I wasn't gonna take it in and get it checked out. When women, God wants you to know that you need to take your emotions to the Lord Jesus Christ, because he has come to deliver you from emotional stress, things that you've been hiding for years and years. It's people that got stuff that has happened to you when you were a child and you've been hiding it emotionally and it has caused you to tear up what could be great relationships, meet people that could be great people that God had placed in your life, but that emotional thing that you haven't allowed the Lord to deliver you from is causing problems in your life, amen? Amen. Three, three out of the five things Jesus laid out for himself to do, deal with, with emotional healing. He says, brokenhearted means it's people that are completely broken, the brokenhearted, completely broken to break. He said the captives, praise God, you deal with the brokenhearted. He deals with the captives and he deals with the bruised. Amen. I just want to speak to your emotions today because we could give you a flower and say, God bless you. You're the strongest individuals that ever worked, walked on earth and you'll walk out of here with that bandage on you again today. 
but there's some things that's been ailing you as a mother. You crying over your child. You're not sharing with anybody. Yes, you trust the Lord. You believe God for deliverance for your child, but they're there for your for your husband, for things going on in your career. You believe God, but there's some emotional stuff going on in your life, and God wants you delivered today. He said, I come to heal the brokenhearted. You know, he wants to set the captives free. You know, that's a prisoner of war. I mean, you know there's a lot of people locked in your prisons of your own mind. Hey, Amen. You're not, it's not a room that's keeping you confined. It's not chains that's keeping you confined. It's a thought. It's a memory of something that you've been thinking about that you just can't possibly get past. I realize that physical infirmities we can live with and you can still have joy. You can, you can, you can be sick. You can, you can have a problem with your leg. You can even have cancer in your body and you, you still can live with joy. But never can our emotions be destroyed and joy continue to reside. You, 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 you can't, your emotions can't be destroyed and let you, you, you still have joy in your life. Amen. I mean, know the joy of the Lord is your strength. Well, how, how is the joy of the Lord your strength when you're allowing that emotion and that, that, that memory of that thing that was done to you mothers? Amen. No matter if it was divorce, no matter if it was separation, somebody did something to you. But, but how, how do you think that you can have pure joy, mama? Praise God when you're holding on of that memory and that thought, emotions. Physical emotions, y'all. Um, physical infirmities are much easier to deal with. And you learn to live with them. I just want to speak to you today. I just want to talk to your spirits, mothers, today. Amen. You know, physical infirmity, they're they much easier to, to live with. How I, I many have learned to live with backaches, mama, because you work so much and you're washing this, you, you're doing clothes, mother, you, you, you're feeding the children, you're holding the grandchildren, and, and you can deal with those physical ailments and those infirmities. They're easy to live with, amen? God don't want you to just live with them. Man, God, God don't want you down here just surviving. God wants you thriving, mothers. God wants the mothers of this church, the mothers of the body of Christ to really be set free, not, not only from their past of sin, he want them set free from the emotional pain that they carried over, that they forgot to release when they crossed over out of the world, amen? Women may have had abortions, mothers. Some had abortions, amen, and you, and, you, and, you, and, you, and you hurt in your heart when you see other kids running around and talking to somebody today. I know God is because early this morning, I said we need to deal with the mother's emotions. They need to know that I'm here. They still going for and they still smiling and they dressing up and they look nice on the outside, but in their emotions, they're dying. They're dying. He said, we got to deal with that. I mean, you know, interior anguish is easy to hide, but it's, it's harder to live with yourself. You, you can hide it. It's interior. It's easier to, to hide and you can live with it. But God, I want us healed this morning. I can sense a heaviness in this room right now because nobody never talk about the emotional peace of the human person. Never talk about what this person is talking about while they're smiling in your face and grinning in your face, but they have broken over something that has happened in their life. Mothers, God wants you delivered. Jesus says he come to set you free, amen? Jesus knows right where you at, mothers. He knows. Amen. You can get up and you can put your coat. Mothers have been learned to do, have been taught and learned to do things on autopilot. Y'all can do stuff on autopilot. Y'all can wash, clean, cook, and have a smile on your face. And all the time, you're dying on the inside. But mothers, there's hope for you on today. Amen. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. Jesus knows right where you are, mother. He knows exactly where you are. He says in Hebrews chapter two, verse 14, for as much then as the children are partakers of the flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death 
were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 says, we do not have an high priest who is unable to sympathize with your weakness. We don't have a, a God that sits real high and, and looks low. We hear that all the time. We have a God that sits high and looks low. No, the Bible says he is very concerned with the affairs of your life. The Bible says God is close enough. If you go after him, God said you can touch him in Acts chapter 17, for he be not far from any of us. Mothers, you that are by yourself, single mothers that are raising children, you need to understand you're not raising them all by yourself because you have a, a friend that sticks closer than a brother. You have a God that has promised never to leave you and never to forsake you. He said he'll be with you low even until the end of the earth. Daddy may not be there, but Father God is there. He'll always be there. He'll never leave you, mother. The emotional peace that you're dealing with in your mind, God said, I'm here to heal you. I'm here to set you free. From, from 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 this 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 bondage or this prison that you allow yourself to live with. Amen. It still exists. He knows your feelings, y'all. Mama, he know how you feel. He knows your hurts. He knows your fears, things that you are afraid of. He, he knows your anxieties. He knows your your frustrations, your hang-ups, your problems, even the numbers of the hair that you have on your head. God says he knows all that. If you'll take a look today and just begin to, as we read God's word and to delve in God's word and to begin to see the attributes and the characteristics of, of, of God, you'll begin to realize that you are not alone and that you are, don't have to hide things from everybody because there's somebody that already knows what you're going through. His name is God. He knows your thoughts from afar. He's om omniscient. He's all-knowing. He's all-present. That's why the Bible says he's a very present help in the time of need. But mothers, if we continue to walk around and, 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 and hold and, and harness these feelings of, 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 of regret or, or unforgiveness and, and meanness and, and even unforgiveness when it comes to our own self, you can't walk in freedom. I know God delivering somebody while I'm talking right now. I know the virtue is leaving and dispensing from my body even now because early this morning, I seen women just just weeping as God was just sharing the word. Women just weeping. They hurting, but they're still managing. They're walking and they're wounded, mamas. You're walking and you're wounded and you don't have to be. Because whom the son has set free is free indeed. And the joy of your Lord is your strength. And he is a comforter. He is a very present help in the time of need. Amen? Amen. I mean, no, he accepts you just the way you are, mama. Mommy, he accepts you, though, and it's a good thing, you know what I mean? Because some people, the reason you don't share the things that you're going through, because you think they look at you in a certain way. But God accepts you exactly how you are. He knows you where you're broken at. He said, let's pull those band aids off today, and let's get down to the heart of the matter. Let's find out what's really making you, making you feel the way that you feel. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 1. He said, return and consider all the oppression that are done under the sun. And behold, the tears of such as were oppressed. And they had no comforter. And on the side of the oppressor, there was power. But they had no comfort. You ever feel like the person against you have power, but you don't have no comfort? That's a misinterpretation of scripture then. Because you have a comforter. And he said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. See, read the word. This is, this is a mindset right here. It's a mindset when you consider all the oppression that are done under the sun, everything that has been done to people, the injustice that are being done to people. He says, consider the oppression that are done under the sun and behold the tears of such as were oppressed. Say, look at the tears of the people. And he said, and they had no comfort. Or could you imagine? Been in the situation. It reminds me when the lepers were at the gate and he came to the conclusion, they said, if we, if we go inside, he said, we, we, we might get captive and we might, we might get killed and they may overtake us. But if we go in, we might, be, we might be free and they might be gone. But one thing for sure, if we stay in this place we're in right now, we're going to die. They came to that conclusion. Now we can go in. We can try to come out of this emotional 
stop sign that we had in our life right now. We, we can try to come out and trust God and believe God. And we might go a step further and realize that we have not really got a revelation of what deliverance is. And we might be in the same position, but you might step forth into the deliverance. And if you believe the sun set free is free indeed, you will walk in your deliverance. But if you stay in the place that you're in right now, like the leper said, you're going to die. God wants you out of that place, y'all. There were tears of the oppressed, the oppressor. Tears that were of people that were being oppressed. Have you ever sat in your home and just cried, mothers? Have you ever just rode in your car and rode to the beach and just cried? Because not only are we dealing with the emotions of oppressed and things that have been done to us, there's things that have been done to us that we couldn't even, we, we, we couldn't do anything about it if we could. Death of a husband, divorce from a husband, abandonment from a husband. Those are things that we can't do anything about. Praise God, but God, he sees your tears. Right where you are in life, right now, he understands everything that you're going through, mothers. I know my mother cried many nights about me. I know she cried many days about me when I was locked up on the other side of the bars in the Port County Jail. I know she was. I could just sense, it. praise God. And mothers, over your child, you shared many of tears as well. The oppressor, the oppressor had power. The oppressor had power, but the oppressed had no comforter. How does that look, man, in everyday life? The oppressor looked like they could do whatever they do and would nothing happen to them. And looked like the ones that were oppressed had no lawyer. They had nobody to defend them. Talking to you. I know it's speaking to some of your minds, people that are live on Facebook. I want you to know that Jesus Christ has come. He ain't coming. He has already come. Amen. And he's come to set the captives free. He want to set you free from your emotions of grief and sorrow. He wants to set you free from everything that you're dealing with right now. Hmm. How I many you know that that was the most powerful tool is deceit? Somebody say deception. 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 Yeah, we never talk about that a whole bunch, but, but he uses lies. He uses deceit. What is deceit? It's the act of practice of, of, of deceiving. Amen. It, it's concealment or distortion of the truth for the purpose of misleading. Wow. Somebody say, wow. It, it, it's concealing or distorting of the truth for the purpose of misleading. So what Satan does, he, he, he does the same thing he did in the garden. You know what the word says, right? But he's asking the same question, did God really say? And if you're not fully persuaded that God really did say it, then you can't walk in an unrevealed truth. If the truth has not been revealed to you, you can't walk in it. I'm going to tell you how I know. How many have said I'm free? I'm done with that. That's behind me. I'm walking out of it and I'm never bringing it back up again. Just to find yourself the next weekend or the next week walking in the same bondage that you were walking in in the previous week. I mean, somebody need help. So, somebody listening today, because I know God ain't going to work it up and put it on my heart and it not be a problem that somebody is dealing with, with your emotions. God said there's healing for mothers that have been emotionally broke. There's healing for everybody in here, men and women. Praise God from emotional hurt. Men have emotional distress. Regret. I live in regret. Regret. Amen. I had destructive behavior patterns my whole life. So I lived in regret, always made the wrong move at the worst time. That brings regret. I didn't have a relation. I didn't have a revelation of Romans chapter eight, verse one. There's no more condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. No more regret. Women, a lot of us. We blame ourselves for a lot of things that are taking place in our life. And we haven't forgiven ourselves. Yep, you made, a, you made a willful choice to do what you did. Willful. And really, it's not the individual. It's yourself who you have not forgiven. Forgive yourself because there's nothing like you taking part in the hurt that you're experiencing. 
nothing like you taking part. That's why, man, the, the, the problems of my life and the failures of my life, I'm learning now what Romans 8 and 1 really does mean. He said there's no more condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. They walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. See, the second part had to be applied to it. See, freedom is in the spirit. Bondage is in the flesh. If you walk in the spirit, whom the son set free is free indeed. The Bible says those who mind the things of the spirit are of the spirit, and those who mind the things of the flesh are after the flesh. And you realize that any man in the flesh cannot please God. Amen. You might say deceit. Most powerful weapon Satan uses. Guess what? If we don't read and study to show ourselves approved, he don't even have to deceive us. We're deceived by default. If you don't read your word, Satan does not have to use lies. Satan used lies when he know that you're trying, when he know you're trying to be delivered, when you know you're trying to walk according to the call of God upon your life. That's when he uses lies, when he see you reading your devotions every morning and praying three times a day and trying to pray for everybody. That's when he used deceit because he come to show you that everything that you study don't mean nothing because he knows he's a legalist. He knows if you really believe what you're reading or not because the way we react after we get done reading. Help us, Holy Ghost. Let's look at Psalm 17. Very powerful when we talk about Satan. I want my mother free. I want every mother free. Every mother free. I want every human being, all my brothers and sisters in this place, whether you're a mother or not a brother, you need to be free today. Psalm chapter 10, verse 7 says, his mouth is full of curses and lies and threats. Trouble and evil are under his tongue. Hmm. Jesus said, you are of your father, the devil, in John 4, 8 and 44. He said, because he's a liar and everything he ever said is a lie. Satan don't tell the truth. Even when he tell the truth, he's telling a true lie. Amen. He's saying you're broke. <laughs> but Jesus, even though he was rich, became poor that through his poverty, you may become rich. So are you really broke? What is broke? That's relative. Amen. If you have all the money in the world and your kids are all messed up and your marriage is messed up and your family and, 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 and your character is messed up, then you're really broke. But if you're broke and don't have no money and you have a family structure and you, and you have a great business and you have a, a great mindset and you're striving to be more like Christ, then you're rich. See, in America, we got everything backwards. We got everything about because the man said last night, you know, he, he said the rich people, they live like they're poor, but yet they're rich. But the poor people live like they're rich, but yet they're poor. See, the Bible said we need to be poor in spirit. That don't mean you don't have no money. That, that means you're desperately dependent on God for everything. That means mean, mean you've exhausted yourself of any, uh, of, of, of any, um, Mm, thing that could be used to get you released of any bondage that you may be in. You come to the end of yourself to say, guess what? I can't get myself out of this situation that I'm in. I can't do nothing about what I'm in. So I'm desperately dependent upon God. He says, lies and evil are under his tongue. He said, he lies and wait near the villages. From ambush, he murders the innocent, watching in secret for his victims. Talking about Satan. And he's prowling. The Bible says Satan goes about as a roaring lion. Somebody say ass. Man. It's not even a roaring lion. He's a, he's a snag a tooth tiger. That's what he is. He ain't got no teeth in his mouth. He, he, he really said meow. He, he ain't really roaring because he can't be a lion because Jesus is the lion of Judah. Man, I, I want us to walk out of here delivered today, moms. I, I want us to walk out of here knowing that we are the king of kings, we are the Lord of Lord, and we need to know our enemy. Anytime you played any type of competitive sport, you always had film day, and you always watched films, and you studied your competitor to see what he does best and his tendencies, as well as we watch the tendencies of our opponent. Our opponent watched the tendencies of you and I. 
He find out if you left handed or right handed. He find out if you play ball, do you got a cross? So he find out, uh, um, uh, do you got a euro step? He find out if you're left handed, mostly left handed. You can't even dribble with your with your right hand. He finds out, and then he works against your weaknesses. What you think Satan does? He knows most women deal with their emotions more than they deal with anything. So he watched film on you and he said, I see her smiling on the outside, but I see her when she go outside and I see that frown when she see that other person and when she see that situation come back in her face again. He watches tendency. He lies and waits for the victim in the ambush. He murders the innocent, watching in secret for his victims. Verse nine, he lies and wait like a lion and covers his lies and wait to catch the helpless. He catches the helpless and drags them off in his nets. His victims are crushed. They are collapsed. They fall under his strength. So who's the master of deceit? Satan is. Who's lying to you and telling you you're no good? Who's lying to your mothers and say you, 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 you're not this or you're not that? It's the Satan. But guess this, guess what? Satan is not walking around in a red suit with a pitchfork. Satan looks just like you and I. Satan looks just like you and I. Amen, because you imagine Eve in the garden. He made a snake get on his belly and he made him crawl. So did he really look like a snake as if we see a snake today? He say on your belly, you're going to crawl from now on because of the sin that was caught. Hmm. What's the most common lie from the devil? Is that nobody cares about you and nobody understands. Don't nobody know what you're going through. The Bible said, thinking not strange concerning the fiery trial. The Bible said, that you're not the only one that's dealing with what you're dealing with. But we all got problems. Somebody said, we all got problems. But well, guess what? Somebody said, we all got a solution too. Man, that's deep right there. That was a revelation right there. Everybody in here got a problem, but everybody in here got a solution. Now, those that take hold and lay hold of the solution, who is Jesus Christ, they walk in victory. Those who don't lay hold of the solution walk in defeat. Now, I don't know about you, but I want to walk in victory. How many want to walk in victory in this place? We want to walk in victory. We want to live in victory. Praise God. Amen. We think even if you told somebody, they, they wouldn't believe. It's so hard to believe that you even have a comforter sometimes because you feel like nobody can comfort you. I mean, feel like that. Hey, Amen. We smiling on the outside, but we hurting on the inside. Mothers, that's healing for your broken heart today. I mean, know the comforter is came. I mean, know the comforter cares. Luke chapter four, verse eighteen. He says, "Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted." Jesus was sent to do these things. Jesus came. Jesus came. And he gone, but he coming back again. So has he done it or has he not done it? Has he healed the broken heart? He healed the broken hearted in the spirit. He set the captives free in the spirit. There's more people locked up here outside of Indiana State Prison than it is in, in Indiana State Prison. See, even people in church still walk in confinement in their minds. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God as the pulling down strongholds, casting down vain imaginations. What's a vain imagination? It's something that God didn't say. It's vain. If God didn't say it, it's a vain imagination. And any high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. What are you putting? That situation, that person, that event, are you putting that in front of God? Well, then it's an idol. Now it's an idol. You've turned that thing into an idol. The priest the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he sat down. Amen. I mean, no, Jesus' entire purpose in coming, it was for you. He came for you. Amen. He came for you hurting. He came for you that have a captive. He came to those that I have a broken heart. Amen. I mean, no fear is the enemy of faith. Talking about the deliverance. Mm. 
I mean, no fear drive you insane, y'all. You become afraid of everything. You don't want to talk. You want to move. You don't want to do nothing. Fear will drive you insane. First Timothy 1 and 7 says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. If God didn't give you that, why are you still living in that? Any man who be in Christ is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. So if I've been created over again, I've, be cre I've been created as a fearless human being, as a loving human being, as a human being that has a sound mind. Any man who be in Christ is a new creation. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Somebody say in the present. Fears of the devil. Fears of the devil, you know. Abuse, physical, mental, sexual, verbal. Abuse. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. It was not your fault. It cannot be fixed. It cannot be wiped away by your continue beating yourself up. Can't continue to beat yourself up and think you're gonna fix the situation. Why does this situation keep confronting you? Because the way that you're responding is not proper. That's why the situation keeps confronting you because you're not confronting it biblically. You're confronting it in your own emotions. You're confronting it with uh, opinions from people that don't even serve the same God that you serve. What are you confronting it from? Well, how are you confronting the issues of your life? Amen. How I many know the blood covers all of us? The Bible says, even though your sins be as scarlet, he'll wash you. You're whiter than snow. I don't know who it is in this building on today. But somebody's been living in deep regret. Somebody's been dealing with hurt, emotional, from your past. And if that's you right now in here, I want you to stand on your feet. I want you to stand up, man, woman. Don't make a difference if these emotions. Praise God, I see three standing already. I know for a fact. Thank you, Lord God, because for one, you do it all over the bill. People just standing up because their emotions, man. You're stuck in your emotions. And God said, I come to fear, free you from it, the guilt. We need to know that your blood covers all. Isaiah 64, verse 6 says, all of us have become like one who is unclean, and all of our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all strive up, shrivel up like leaves, and like the wind of our sins sweep us away. Amen. The very best that you could do cannot compare to the holiness of God, y'all. God wants to heal you from your emotions today. Got ministers standing up. Praise God. Got women of God and men of God. That your emotions, it's in your mind. The battle is in your mind, and we've been losing in our mind. God says the day is the day of salvation. You got to release it. Dad, you got to release it. Regret, you got to release it. Men that have walked away, men that are right now doing things, praise God, that are not right. You got to walk right now. You got to accept the freedom that comes through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. God wants to clean the slate today. Amen. The way you've been responding to it is not biblical. You know all the scripture. You read them all. But you're still walking in bondage. Bible says, love your enemy. Do good to them that despitefully misuse you. He said, if he takes something from you, give him the other one that you have. Slap you on one side of the face, turn to the other side of the cheek. Amen. Somebody said, I'm not living in my emotions. <laughs> so I'm not living in my feelings. Say, I'm living by faith because the just shall walk by faith. I trust you, God, that you came to deliver me from my emotions, from my feelings, from my past, hurts I've caused to myself. Hurts that have been caused done to me. I release today 
my mind is fixed on you. You will keep me in perfect peace if I keep my mind stayed on you. Thank you, Father. Let me go and share with the people that I've hurt because of my emotion that I'm free. It wasn't me. It was the old me that responded like the old me. I am new in Christ. I'm walking in victory. I'm walking in freedom. Today is the first day of the best days of my life. In the name of Jesus, I trust you, God, for deliverance from my broken heart, from my captivity. In Jesus' name, Lord, I love them. Put them in your face right now. Whatever it is, word you say, Lord, I love them just like you love me. Lord, I forgive them. I walk in victory in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray. Amen. Come on, clap your hand for Jesus if you believe that. Come on, clap your hand for Jesus. Amen. I know it. I know it. I know it. Praise God. I know it. I know it. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Freedom. When the sun set free, is free indeed. Amen. I see tears in the room. I see people say, man, it's just God. I had something I wanted to minister today, man, about even on yesterday, man. But the Lord said earlier this morning, he said, it is a heavy burden on the people of God. And if it's only one person in this building, he did it just for you. Amen. That's, 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 that's what he is. That's what God is. God left 99 just for one. Man, he said, I want you to walk out of here in victory. I want you to walk out of here in so much freedom today. In so much freedom today, forgive them, set them free. Amen. Forgive her, set her free. Amen. And let God just come and do a new thing in you. Amen. This is the first day of the best days of your life. In Jesus' name, you can be seated. Amen. In the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 Praise God. I thank God on today, man. We got short service for Mother's Day today. Amen. But I'm just thankful. Y'all want me preaching? Some want me preach what I was going to preach? No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to overstep the, the, the spirit of the true and living God. I want to just respond to the spirit of God when he asks me to respond. And I believe that's when others get victory. When you walk in obedience to the spirit of God. Obedience blesses others. Amen. Amen. I, I will read something that I read last night um, about us being way too busy. Amen. And I want you to get this because I, I read it last night and, and I was speaking to people uh, who had, were inspiring to be business people because it was a, the um, Trailblazers Award Bank. And I want to thank all of y'all who came last night. We, we had the most people out there. We had about 36 people last night, three tables. And I just thank God for y'all. Give yourself a hand. Amen. And John Tay and Portia came all the way up. Amen. Had the whole family in the household last night. Praise God. Thank y'all. Praise God. Praise God. John T. He and Portia, they, they, they watch us on Facebook, man, and always uh, uh, very supportive of us. I love y'all. Amen. And thank God for both of you. Praise God. And, and I'm just grateful. But there were a lot of inspiring business people in the room last night. And, and, and business can be hectic at times. It can be real hectic, man, because in our mind as men, all we're thinking about, we, we, we're going to provide because we're to be the provider, the protector, and the freezer of our home. And so we go hard. Praise God. And that's built in. That's built in. Praise God. And, and women that are inspiring to be business women and people of God, let's not be way too busy, y'all. So last night I entitled this way too busy, but never get too busy to love. Never get too busy chasing success that you miss significance. Never get too busy chasing success that you miss significance. Significance is what's important because it's what you're supposed to be doing. Don't ever become overwhelmed in your dream that, uh, that you don't have time to help someone else dream come true. Don't ever let fame replace family. Always be readily available to stop what you're doing to go to the aid of someone that needs you more than the project you're working on for yourself. Never miss the still small cry for help because of the loud noise of your ego. 
Never avoid your personal health indicator lights. Hello, <laughs> because you're trying to shine. I'm gonna say that again. Never avoid your personal health indicator lights because you're trying to shine. Success is cool, but significance is awesome. Only what you do for someone else will bring true meaning and fulfillment to your soul. God bless. And that was something that I wrote yesterday and I was just, when I got up yesterday morning and I wrote that and I was thinking about we, we way too busy. Because at the end of the day, when, when, when the curtains close and it's a wrap, only what we've done for Christ is gonna matter. Only what we did for others in terms of walking our faith out before this world is gonna matter, amen. So man, let's focus on significance and not success because success looks way different in God's eyes than it looks in the world's eyes. The world say, get the, get the bag. The world say, get the bag. Jesus said, I got the bag. Get me and you got the bag. Yeah, yeah, we say, get the bag. Jesus said, I got the bag. <laughs> I did it on the cross. I earned permission over everything over this earth. I descended into this world and then I ascended. And everything is in my hand. So let's live by faith, y'all. From now on, let's walk by faith. Praise God and not by sight. If it don't make sense, you might, you might be right there in biblical land if it don't make sense. But if it make all the sense to you, it might not be God. Because his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. Amen. Amen.